React Native Firebase Authentication allows our users to log into our app in multiple ways, such as an SMS verification to a phone number, or maybe by social media through Twitter or LinkedIn or Google. We're going to take a look at it today and how to get it up and running. If you haven't heard of me before, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development, so without further ado, we're going to jump straight into it. Before we get started, we'll need to make sure that React Native Firebase app module is installed and I've done a previous video on this that you guys can check out. If you've done this, we we'll can move straight on to this step, which is installing the auth module. To do this, we're simply going to copy over this yarn add at react native firebase forward slash auth command and paste this into our project. And this will install the dependencies so we can begin to use it. If you're running on iOS, you will need to make sure that the pod is installed and we can do this pretty simply. We just browse into the iOS folder and we run pod install. This will install all the components that we'll need for this dependency. Once it's done, we can CD back out into our main directory and start running our React Native application. The first thing we're going to do is listen for authentication state. And we're going to do this by essentially using the method over here called onauth state changed. This allows us to subscribe to current user events on whether they're logged in or not. So as soon as a Firebase connection has been initialized, we'll be able to understand this. Let's take a look at some of the code to generate this below. Let's take a look at what's happening here in this code. We're importing use state and use effect, and we're also importing the authentication library. We're creating a new app here, and we're doing a couple of things. We're initializing a variable called user and initialize, and initialize is set to true while the user one is pretty much empty. We're creating here a method called onauth state change, where we're passing a user variable and setting this against the state. And we're also resetting initialize back to false if it's set to true. Finally, we've got a use effect here. And this is using auth. It's using the onauth state changed and passing that into a function here that will set our user. So finally, if the initializing is set to true, we don't get anything back for this component. But as soon as it is, then we're going to be setting in a return. And this return will be login if the user isn't set, or it will be essentially returning a component with the user.email. Now let's try this out in practice because this does look a little bit complicated, but it's actually quite simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch our React Native application and we've got a lot of code in here that we've been doing before. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just paste this import here at the top. We'll rename this to login app as a component. And what we'll do is we'll copy um, login app and we'll paste it here into our application. We'll get rid of this app button and this banner and a couple of the other stuff. So we just have that login section. And here we can see that component is working. We've got the login text just here. We haven't signed in as a user yet, but this is ready to go. So what we can take a look at now is actually creating some authentication. And we'll do this by doing some sign in. So let's have a look at what we need to do that. Some applications don't actually need you to sign in and it's still good to be able to track who our anonymous users are. We can do this through an anonymous sign in using the method sign in anonymously. And we're going to use this method right now to give it a test and make sure that we're tracking this. So we've got the method here that's being pulled through auth. And what we're going to do is we're just going to console log out whether it works or not. So let's copy this across and we'll paste this here into our application. And we can put this anywhere. So in this case, I might just put it in our did component mount at the very top of our application. In here, we'll do a sign in anonymously. If it did, we'll have a console.log that the user signed in. But if it didn't, it'll tell us. Let's save that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable debugging. Now be aware that if you are using sign in anonymously, we're going to have to actually enable that in Firebase. So let's jump into our Firebase console here. We'll select our React Native Firebase project. We've got a few of them now, but uh, let's select that. And when we do, what we're going to do is set up the authentication section, which is here on the left. Let's scroll down to authentication, which should be just here. And we've got the option here for anonymous. I'm going to edit that and I'm going to hit to enable it and hit save. By doing that, we should be able to start using that. So when I reload my application now, we'll see that works, which is great. There's another thing that we've now been able to test as part of signing in. We've signed in anonymously and we can see that our hook here for the auth state changed has automatically taken effect. 
We're now provided with a welcome user.email. Unfortunately, this is an anonymous sign-in, so we don't have a user.email, but we can see that this component seamlessly transitioned as we expected to. And if we do a reload, we can see that it is still seamlessly transitioning, which is great. It's keeping that state which has logged us in. Another popular way to be able to log in is simply with a username and password. This is one of the most normal ways to do it. And to do this, we'll first have to enable it in the Firebase console. So let's just jump in here and select email and password. And I'm gonna hit enabled here and hit save. When we do this, we'll be able to use a method called create user with email password and as well as a sign in with email and password. These two methods can be used essentially however you need, but in this case, we're going to test them out to see how it works. We'll first create a user here called Sarah Lane and we'll set a password on there. Once that's done, we'll have a look at making sure that they can sign out and sign back in. So let's give that a test. What I'm gonna do is to start off with, I'm just gonna create this as a method down here and replace the sign in on, um, anonymously. So let's first remove that and refresh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function in here, maybe called something like create user. And with this function, what we could do is normally pass in maybe a username or an email with a password, but in this case, I'm just gonna reuse the syntax we have here. And then I'll create a button down here to execute this function. So in this case, our button might be something simple like title create user and we'll do an on press handler and this will just call this dot uh, create user now let's create a second button here and we'll set this one to be log off and this might call the function log off as well and we'll create this up here too let's create a function here called log off and for this function let's copy over this sign out option i'm just going to paste this in below great so if that's saved, we can now have these two buttons. If we select to create a user, this will create our Sarah user and log us in, which is really cool. Now, when we refresh the application, we can see we're logged in here as Sarah. But if we select log off, it takes us back to the login screen, which is cool. But if we were to create another user, we've already created one called Sarah, so we can't do that again. This is where we might need some error handling, or we might need to create a login method using the options here available. In this case, to login, we'll need to use this method called sign in with email and password. So let's check that out. In our case, I believe the syntax for this will be more or less the same. So I'm just gonna replace this function here and save our app. When we reload and we'll change this button maybe to log in as Sarah, we should see that that just works. So let's test that out. And we're passing in the username and password here and we are logging in. We could create an input, but in this case, I just wanna move on and have a look at our next type of sign in, which is using show social media as well as phone verification numbers to sign into our application. We're going to start off with a Google sign in. And to do this, we're going to have to do a little bit of configuration to start off with. Google requires you to have set an SH1 key as part of the configuration for Android use. And to do this, we're going to have to jump back into our getting started guide and perform this action. So I'm going to jump in here and have a look at what we need to do to do this. And what we're going to need to do is we need to sign our CD into our Android folder and run Gradle with a signed report. And when we do this, we'll get a copy of our SH1 key from the debug. So let's do this. We'll CD in and we'll copy over this syntax. And I'm just going to do this here in terminal and open up our console and create a new instance here where I'll generate that. So. There it is, and let's just make sure that we're running this properly. I believe we're missing something here, so I'm just gonna CD first into Android, and then we'll just run this command just over here, which is the Gradle with a W, uh, signed report. And this is generating the certificate now. We'll need to grab a copy of the key, and mine is just stored over here. With this key, we'll be using this to place into our Firebase console. So what we'll do is we'll open up Firebase here and we'll jump into the settings for our project. 
Our project setting here is for Android and iOS, but I'm gonna select the one here for our Android one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a copy here of the SH key fingerprint. And I'm gonna paste this in here. So I believe that's, uh, where is it? Here it is. I'm gonna copy this out and just paste it here below and hit save on that and that'll add that fingerprint for us to be able to now use the sign-in services. We're also going to have to jump back into the Firebase console and head into authentication and sign-in methods and in here we'll just have to make sure that we enable the Google sign-in option and make sure we configure an email address for that to work on. Before triggering a sign-in request we also have to initialize the Google SDK for the required scope using the web client ID. And we can grab this from the Google services.json and we're going to paste this and initialize it into our project. So let's copy over this syntax here and jump into our project below. And what we're going to do is just paste this here near the top of our file. We're going to paste it up here and we're going to copy over this syntax and paste this in below. Then we'll browse here into our Android app Google services.json and copy over that ID. So let's jump in here and go into Android app and I think it is here Google services ID. In here we want to browse through to client auth and the client ID. If we have a look in here, here's our client object with the auth client and here's the ID. We're going to copy this and paste it here as the web client ID and hit save on that. As part of enabling Google sign-in, we'll also need to make sure that we install the React Native community package for Google sign-in. We can do this by just browsing to the package over here. It's a GitHub package and the installation is pretty simple. All we'll need to do is install it by running yarn add at react native community forward slash Google sign in. So let's do this now. I'm just going to copy over this syntax and we're going to paste this into our console. We'll run over here yarn add and just grab the latest version of it, which should be automatically generated. Great, so now that all of that is set up, we'll be able to create the sign-in. And to do this, we're going to create a button that'll call on Google button press. And this will call this function here, which is a function that will do the authentication through Google and pass that into auth. So let's create a function here called Google button press, which will be asynchronous. And let's create this button as well. We'll copy over this component because this is ready to go. And the only change we'll make is we'll call this dot on Google button press because we'll be pasting this into our component. Let's hit save on that and refresh and that looks like it's up and running. I'll log off our previous session. We can give this a test now. When we press it, we can see that it does take us to a Google sign in method. And here we don't have a login yet, but I'm just going to put one quickly in and we can test this out. Great, looks like that's logged me in. So the Google sign in is working. If I refresh, I still say stay signed in. So that's really cool. Another way you might want to sign up is by using phone authentication. And this is where you send an SMS to verify that a user is real and authorized. And it's not supported in all countries, but it's a really good sign in method. So let's take a look. We've got this method here called sign in with phone number. And we'll be doing this to be able to log in in this case. We're going to create a new component here called phone sign in. And we're going to copy most of the syntax across. We've already imported most of the functions. So this should be pretty easy to do. Well, I'm just going to create this function here up above. And I'm going to paste this into our application. So this is just going to go here above the Google sign in we created earlier. And for this one here, we don't really have to pass in anything else. Finally, just like the last couple of times, we'll need to enable this sign in method by just making sure it's enabled here on Google. And the following steps are sometimes required when you're doing this, but we're lucky enough that uh, essentially React Native Firebase already takes care of this for us. We're going to add a test number in here. And there's an example from the React Native Firebase toolkit, which we can put in here. We can also pass in one, two, three, four, five, six as the method we'll be using for this. So let's add that in here and we'll save this. So we'll be able to use it now. When we refresh our application, 
and we'll select the phone number to sign in. Unfortunately, this isn't one of those things that works on an emulator device, but I've done this in the past and it works perfectly fine. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Great, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video on React Native Firebase authentication. If you did, hit like and subscribe because I'll be doing more videos around React Native Firebase in general. I've already got a few up here, so I might post them up as little floating um, videos you can click on. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.